Hey, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session. We are just waiting for maybe one more minute for other attendees to join. And also one of our panelists is, I think, facing some internet uh, related issues. So let's just give, give it one more minute. And after that, we'll get started. So I think in the interest of time, let's get started. Uh, I see a lot of attendees are already there waiting for, uh, for the webinar to begin. So uh, welcome all, uh, very warm welcome to everyone. Uh, we have an overwhelming response to this webinar as I can see a large number of attendees today and there are many still joining. So let me kick start the session by introducing myself. So I am Vikas Chanilia. I am Chief Revenue Officer at Freetex. And Freetex is a startup that is working with customers for addressing their needs around logistics operation. And I will be your host for the day. Now, coming to our topic, which is reducing uh, carbon footprint in supply chains. Uh, according to one estimate, a manufacturing supply chain is the second highest at releasing carbon emission. And the first being energy, which is unsurprisingly so. But that too is heavily influenced by supply chains. And add to that, the world is moving fast and logistics is getting complex. Supply chains are getting bigger. The customers are becoming more demanding, which is what is putting even more pressure on our environment. So reducing carbon footprint in supply chain has direct impact on sustainability objectives of any company. And sustainability is nowadays a big word and also a buzzword. We at Fleetex believe that to solve problems, we need to talk about it. And to talk about it, we need to bring in the industry leaders and domain experts together. And hence, today we are joined by our esteemed panelists who have vast experience in multiple aspects of supply chain and logistics. So let me introduce them. So first, our first panelist is Mr. Anil Radhakrishnan. He brings in overall 29, of 29 years of experience in logistics. Anil started his logistics career with AP Moller Mers. He has been the CEO and director of Adani Logistics and is currently the founder of SX Supply Chain Solutions. Our second panelist is Mr. Jishan Mukhi. He has overall experience of 14 years and he has been a long timer with Mercs again. And since last 10 years, he has handled all aspects of 3PL logistics, whether this is import, export, container shipment, operation of the execution, and customer service. Our third final panelist, unfortunately, he couldn't join so far. Uh, his name is Tribhuvan Singh. I think he'll be joining soon. Uh, he has been, uh, he has more than 18 years of experience, and he has been associated with companies like IBM and PwC, working on analytics and data science engagements. Currently, he is the global business owner of digital logistics platform at Bosch. So I would welcome again uh, Anil and Jishan to the webinar sessions. Uh, so let me begin with you, Anil. Uh, and based on your experience, uh, how do you think the trend of sustainability is evolving? Currently, it is more of self-governed model, self-controlled model by the organization. 
but do you think there will be some directive from the government soon yeah. thanks uh, thanks because uh, thanks to be a part of this uh, event today um, you know see uh, esg uh, is something which uh, we all know it has become the focus area and it has become a buzzword as well uh, it's 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 the most important priority if you ask me uh, for the leaders running countries running organization so it it's something which uh, we all know it it has to it, it has to happen because it's 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 become a vital part of uh, any organization a vital part of our daily life as well so what i i from my experience uh, you know you you can't just leave it to uh, a government or any any particular uh, organization to see that you know uh, they will give you something on a, on a on a plate like this is esg and you follow no uh, what what i have seen is that we should uh, right now everybody is in a, a learning uh, mode uh, and it is becoming a shared responsibility like i would say collaboration uh, plays a, a huge role at this point so we we need to have a learners mindset uh, uh, on achieving our targets on uh, sustainability reducing carbon emissions because uh, if you uh, if you look at there is a there's a wide gap between the even the understanding of uh, uh, esg and sustainability among different stakeholders so i i will just uh, um, touch upon something Uh, not with the multinationals because they already have a structured way of handling it but when you look at the suppliers the the msmes mm -hmm. the small and medium enterprises which forms the larger chunk of uh, value chain uh, to the larger uh, uh, organization the understanding is uh, very limited because yes. I, i i just can uh, give uh, this from my experience because we also do few uh, um, consulting on uh, supply chain how to i mean sorry on uh, sustainability and how to uh, get the sustainable sustainability into your organization i just can uh, um, relate one experience where we had with the company of around 200 300 crore turnover you know mm -hmm. they 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 had the compulsion from their uh, um, customers you need to get into the uh, esg mode but then they are that totally confused what to do what exactly is esg Uh, uh what is in it for us whether uh, if i put money in esg whether that is going to be giving me returns so you know this is this is the kind of questions which people are asking uh, these days so what we have gone through is uh, there there is should be a behavioral uh, shift which is needed uh, in this kind of organization because what what uh, few deliberation with the top management ceo to make first him yeah. understand the top management understand uh, what is the relevance of esg and that is really uh, a game changer for him in business and also for sustaining his business so from uh -huh. there we moved on to the organization we and we we get, get got into the organization looked into the each functions and then make them understand esg is something not uh, very alien it is something which can be a part of your uh, day to day working so what i mean to say is you know that that shift in the uh, the, the behavior um the the more than ever organization should uh, understand uh, this is something you know which is really needed and we should imbibe this in our behavioral uh, as a behavioral change as a cultural change and uh, uh, learn to understand and adapt and move forward uh, of course government has a role to play there should be a directive uh, these are all uh, fine but i i would say you know there should be a collaborative approach between the stakeholders uh, because uh, if i if i answer yes, you yes no no i think i completely agree i think you touched upon an important aspect which is not just this self uh, uh, development or the self uh, discipline by the company or the push by the government but i think about those small companies who really don't understand the topic maybe not that uh, that much in detail without those companies part participating i think the goal really cannot be achieved so i think thanks for sharing your, your views mr anil um so dishan over to you i think within all this we are talking about supply chain and all these companies which are involved uh, in terms of logistics how important do you think is logistics as a function to improve or meet sustainability sustainability goals for any organization yeah. thanks uh, thanks vikash and uh, thank vikash and thanks for having me on this uh, webinar firstly and, and welcome to everyone uh, you know we recently did some uh, Uh, studies right in terms of you know uh, what is uh, you know what is the contribution uh, of logistics or transportation uh, to the carbon emissions in india and it's as much as 13% uh, you know so if you actually look at uh, sustainability and and achieving uh, uh, carbon neutrality 
then I think the big pockets, like you mentioned, of course, is the manufacturing, uh, the energy side. And then after that, the next one is really coming in, in transportation. Uh, uh, and if you look at the large, uh, you know, top, top 200 customers of ours as Merce, uh, most of them, uh, when, when, we, when we interact with them, uh, then, or, you know, I think more than 90% of them have a stated goal uh, to achieve, uh, you know, their sustainability targets. And most of them are moving towards uh, science-based uh, emission targeting. Uh, okay. And, and it, it's absolutely not possible without having, uh, you know, with, if, for example, 13 to 15% of your emissions are mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, your transportation or your logistics function, uh, then it's very, very difficult for you to address this, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, without a, without without uh, the collaboration, like Anil mentioned, with your logistics providers. So, as, as mm -hmm. logistics providers, I think it's it's imperative that uh, you know everyone starts thinking about how they can enable their uh, mm -hmm. you know, their, their, their customers uh, to achieve uh, you know carbon neutrality, to achieve their ESG goals. Because uh, you know if you are not able to actually do that, uh, or or able to help them uh, reduce their carbon footprint. Then, as a logistics provider, uh, you tend to actually lose, uh, uh, you know, your hold. So, so in that sense, uh, you know, to answer your question, how important is logistics? Uh, then, definitely, I think without without having this, uh, you know, link of the puzzle, uh, you know, solved, I, I don't think any company will be able to achieve, uh, you know, carbon neutrality or or their ESG goal. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, thanks, Dishan. I always see whenever I discuss with the customer, there is always an internal debate whether this is a logistics or their internal manufacturing plant or manufacturing process that is uh, is uh, providing the highest contribution to to carbon emissions. But I think a logistics is is an important uh, function, and uh, I think people are realizing realizing that this is something that they need to look at first and maybe need to fix. So, so, so thanks for sharing your view, Dishan. Uh, Anil sir, I will again come back to you. I think you again uh, already touched an important part about smaller companies. But if you look at a customer, you know, the major company that is there in the supply chain uh, and look at their ecosystem, uh, so their partners and their customers. So, so what are their expectations from these partners uh, in terms of how they can position themselves uh, to add value to the sustainability objectives? Okay, uh, because I just uh, would like to add to what uh, Shishan also has mentioned, because to uh, give a context to your uh, the question, uh, you know, supply chain uh, as a whole plays a key role uh, in sustainability. There is no doubt about that. And mm -hmm. uh, supply chain is the biggest contributor for carbon emission. Um, some some reports have gone through it, almost 60% of that, uh, of the total emission comes from, from the supply chain. Of that 50% comes from different, seven industries, especially food, FMCG, transportation, fashion, auto, and construction. So these seven industries just account to 50% of the uh, emissions. Uh, while uh, the government policies pledges focus on achieving net zero emission by 2050, um, you know, it's the, the important part is it's the emission avoided in the next few years. That will have a greater impact because we, we, we need to avoid that emission, right? And like what Shishan mm -hmm. mentioned, global transportation is responsible for 16% of the uh, overall gas house, uh, I mean, this uh, gas uh, emissions. And therefore, this is one of the radical uh, uh, area where uh, we need to uh, uh, change, right? So, but one different perspective also you need to take here is that a supply chain also is the biggest victim of the global warming. Because look at this way, yeah. uh, look look at the entire disruptions happening in supply chain. Uh, in one of the UN uh, SG reports says 49% of the CEOs are stating that they're struggling with the issues related to supply chain disruptions uh, out of extreme weather events. Uh, and almost 30% of the CEOs say top three risk elements in business, they call supply chain disruption as the top three. So mm. supply chain is both sides you know, it, it, it's like uh, impacted. It is causing as well as it, it, it's, it's also facing the yeah. uh, root shock of uh, the, the greenhouse emissions, the climate change disruptions. So that, that is the context right now. So, you know, when we, we as a supply chain uh, service provider approach our uh, uh, customers, today their, 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 their uh, perspective also is changing because Earlier, they look at cost, whether they can do this, they could look, look at the transaction. But now uh, they're, they're asking this question, by 2030 or 2050, my emission norms, my 
um, sustainability footprint is this to achieve my uh, sustainability footprint are you ready so you know that is that is very very important like uh, shishan mentioned like companies like mars at the very large scale and companies like us Uh, who are um, uh, um, growing uh, uh, supply chain uh, logistics companies it's very prudent that we adapt to this new culture and ensure and give that confidence to our uh, customers yes uh, we understand uh, the importance of this and we are there to uh, work along with you handhold you and uh, uh, work out you know whatever be the Im- improvisation needed so as a supply chain service provider it is very important very vital that we position ourselves uh, to ensure our customers uh, reach their uh, target goals so uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, the most important part in this whole uh, exercise uh, because is that you know small intentional changes you know that is the first start because that is what yes. is needed right now because we can talk about big big things but small intentional mm-hmm. changes which will create the behavioral change in our organization first individually first and then uh, build it as a culture so that you know we we are positioned well enough uh, to serve our customers well so it's it's very important uh, like you know uh, you you first understand if you ask me i'll understand that esg goals and then work backwards what is uh, within my uh, uh, frame of uh, responsibility what is that i i could deliver to make it happen yes yes absolutely right i think as a supply chain as a name suggests right it's a, a, a ecosystem where the companies are connected with each other and while they're talking about how the system of these companies need to talk how the data needs to flow and broke the four walls of the organization i think uh, you touched an important point i think it's also a culture that needs to really uh, also merge and a small step needs to be taken to, to be able to achieve the objectives and basically then work towards the the larger goal so we have now also been joined by trivuvan trivuvan since you were not able to join uh, i also took the liberty to introduce yourself at the beginning of the session and we started the session without you in the interest of the time so so welcome yeah. to the session trivuvan so i think we will Thank also you. get started with you um you coming from bosch bosch is a big organization and you have dealt with multiple uh, customers so what are your views on sustainability at ecosystem level yes so thank you uh, very much for giving me this opportunity and to all our uh, viewers and listeners you know a great day to all of you so as you said bosch is uh, you know one of the brands which is at forefront of driving this sustainability in europe and its worldwide all the location so uh-huh. in fact bosch is carbon neutral across its 400 locations plant locations and buildings since 2020 and we are broadening the focus of our activities to also reduce emissions produced outside bosch direct sphere of influence for example our suppliers in logistics the products that we use how they are made so we want to reduce these upstream and downstream emissions as well by 15% in absolute terms by 2030 mm-hmm. and in yes. 2021 itself we agreed that you know reducing carbon dioxide emissions and we have as a target for across our uh division for all the products that we produce so bosch is very conscious of our role that we play in the society and we are very very uh, you know uh, conscious of the planet that we are living in and here we have this year like 2022 is we are celebrating as one earth right so right mm-hmm. from environment day and here our motto in bosch is you know reduce reuse and you know recycle so that's what we have been focusing on in within our plants and also we are encouraging our suppliers for upstream and downstream also to mm-hmm. you know note down their carbon credits and that's how we are trying to offset all those emissions which are unavoidable so that even our upstream and downstream you know our suppliers and partners become carbon neutral by 2030 great great excellent i think bosch being a leader uh, in, in many aspects of the industry i think the companies look at them on how they are tackling this issue so thank you very much for sharing those initiatives uh, uh, tribhuvan uh, so coming back to you jishan i think uh, and this one is my favorite right um, while sustainability remains a focus of the organization it also takes a lot of bandwidth right so people wonder whether this focusing on sustainability decreases efficiency or they can they go both hand in hand 
no uh, because of course uh, you know it, it definitely goes hand in hand I and mean, there's absolutely no two ways about it uh, mm-hmm. you know i you know it it uh, it's hard for us to think saying okay uh, yes initially yes is when you're mapping out your supply chain and figuring out what the uh, real impact and what to do yes of course there you will uh, have to put in some effort uh, initially but then actually when you when you start uh, looking at what are the options and opportunities uh, there as an organization you have to Uh, drive sustainability in supply chain, especially on the transportation side. Uh, then there mm-hmm. is uh, definitely a lot of uh, efficiency also, right? So one good example is uh, you know how do you actually reduce the number of empty moves that you are doing uh, in your transportation, right? Uh, how can you use technology to leverage that better? How can you plan your operations better so that you optimize your loads uh, rather than mm-hmm. setting part loads? Uh, you know how do you make sure that you use the best route? Uh, like like Tribhuvan also spoke about, uh, you know, reusing. Uh, recycling right how do you make sure that you make the most out of those parts of your supply chain and if you actually look at all these things uh, and if you do it the right way uh, and plan it the right way then definitely it's a lot more efficient as well uh, because you know the answers are pretty much uh, you know uh, that you'll get are are you know are in uh, in line with efficiency right so you will save costs or you will avoid uh, cost at the same time you will uh, avoid burning fuel and this you will see across the supply chain right so it's uh, you know it it it's the important part over here is to orchestrate and like are made made part of the culture of an organization because once you start doing that then automatically uh, within the operations or even at the operational level you will start finding people coming up with ideas on how this can be done uh, yes. you know so it's it's a lot of uh, you know planning uh, it's a use of technology in the right way and and there of course partners like pretex etc you know that that comes in because you you know you are able to sort of use some of that uh, and then obviously it's about you know driving that culture throughout and you know listening to what's coming from the floor uh, and from the operational side and you know there are common sense approaches uh, to driving both sustainability and efficiency yes yes great answer i think you gave the right examples uh so tribhuvan i think maybe i will also ask you to share your views on the same uh, uh, aspect right efficiency versus sustainability question yeah and look in the short run we may focus on efficiency and you know at the cost of uh, sustainability right but mm-hmm. in the long run it is going to bite us never behind and that's the reason you know it's as good as saying that you know should we focus on quality or should we focus on efficiency right so if you link sustainability as one of the key cardinal principles along with quality and the value that we are driving for our end consumers so sustainability then starts coming naturally in our ethos and across our plants and across our uh, people who are working on it so uh-huh. for example the new and the new initiatives that we are launching even in that one we are very conscious of how or what measures we need to take so that we don't increase the burden on our planet so whatever emissions or uh, uh, side effects that are you know being produced because which are inevitable how do we either limit them or you know we refine them make them reusable so those are some of the key uh, aspects that are considered as part of our green lighting of any new project i'll give mm-hmm. you one more example so in bosch now we are launching a logistics operating system which is uh, it's a huge vision it's a bold vision it's a global platform and where bosch wants to enter at ecosystem level and play the role of an orchestrator and that mm-hmm. is precisely for this reason that today we see uh, Uh, hundreds and thousands of point solutions available but then core business owners have to deal with hundreds of uh, different systems and applications they have to export data import data and uh, you know get approvals and even then they are not able to get timely insight as to what to action yeah. upon and what it leads to is because of these various disparate systems is that uh, inefficiency gets built in although we keep mm-hmm. talking about efficiency there is lack of room for automation there is lack of room for you know uh, uh, getting those uh, timely actionable insights what happens is let's say today a truck driver goes from uh, ludhiana to salem 
he has no guarantee or visibility of when he will be coming back because he doesn't have yes. access to return load visibility so that mm. driver will keep on waiting there for two days four days and then may have to go from salem to say the pondicherry or chandigarh to get the return load and then come via different route and that adds you know load on our uh, society if you compare india's logistics you know cost is about 14% which is very high compared to advanced economies where logistics cost as percentage of gdp is 7 to 8% so that much mm-hmm. is getting added just in gdp cost imagine the amount of uh, tax it will be adding on our ecosystem on our environment so mm-hmm. this logistics operating system that we are planning to launch will have this sustainability as its key tenet where we will allow all the operators stakeholders to come and co-create new offerings which will make them efficient through transparency and visibility and it will be an open mm-hmm. system so some of these efforts bosch is you know leading today and as i said in all the uh, projects that we are green lighting today we are very much conscious and we don't see there is a dichotomy between sustainability and efficiency we see mm-hmm. sustainability along with quality and value as the key ethos and efficiency is then what you will bring in in all the aspects that we do but these are the cardinal yes. principles that we start on any business uh uh-huh. great great and thanks again for giving the bosch example to everyone uh anil not to leave you out of this so i think i would also like to have your views on efficiency versus sustainability uh, you know uh, tribhuvan has uh, put it very nicely you know because we can't uh, compromise uh, efficiency but at the same time long term uh, sustainability is going to be uh, the key uh, because that that you can't uh, have a you know uh, two different approach for that because uh, when you look at the sustainability initiatives over a long term it adds to the efficiency so uh, mm-hmm. and to just to add to the point on technology as an enabler because that is uh, where yes. you know it's going to be very key like uh, what uh, tribhuvan mentioned uh, the the logistics platform they are working on or the fleetex model you know uh, we we seen the companies right now if you look at uh, adopting the digital technology uh, and uh, it's going to be a key uh, in uh, esg roadmap because uh, modern supply chain if you look at uh, modern supply chain uh, the, the we have to simultaneously prioritize esg elements and also Uh, we have to be resilient and profitable because profitability will never change because that word uh, uh, will always be there <clears throat> so uh, with a kind of high volume in business we look at the transaction millions of uh, uh, skus uh, thousands of suppliers thousands of uh, transaction you can't do it uh, manually so uh, uh, especially you know when algorithm becomes more complex you have to optimize you have to optimize more parameters you have to build in more, more assumptions so uh, a digital uh, um, uh, drive uh, in is going to be very key in uh, uh, in the esg initiatives um, to add to that you know if you look at the changes what is happening with the uh, uh, the, the emerging trend what you have seen in technology is to create transparency and traceability because the way things are heading is towards that um mm-hmm. uh, there will be three steps in this process one to verify verify whether you follow ethical productions norms whether you follow the esg ethical uh, parameters uh, that is the first uh, part and then trace uh, as as a consumer you 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 can trace the entire flow of supply chain and see whether it falls in line with the uh, esg uh, values and finally mm-hmm. to share with the customer through qr code or something because that that's happening right now so uh, mm-hmm. over a period of time uh, the when the customers will get be, becoming more and more educated uh, you know this this uh, technology uh, intervention and digitalization will become the key and these three factors of verify trace and uh, share is going to be very important so you know over a period of time uh, all these elements leads to efficiency enhancement whether be it uh, efficiency which leads to the profitability part because end of the day it is going to uh, help you to enhance the profitability and the long term sustainability of the uh, organization and the business so so i i would say you know this goes hand in hand hand in hand uh, uh, rikas correct correct and i think uh, in our experience also the way we we engage with the customers of fleetex i think while we are a technology company and i think uh, the customers are realizing that technology 
can uh, take up and perhaps address a lot of uh, strategic uh, initiatives as well. And I think uh, directly some of these uh, processes, when they become efficient, the byproduct is sustainability, right? So, so thanks all for sharing your views. Uh, so going forward, I, I've heard a lot about, uh, you know, another buzzword, which is zero carbon emission. And I think there are uh, bigger companies that are talking about that. So is it something that is just a buzzword or is it something that is really possible? And again, I can maybe go with you Anil first and then rest of the panelists. No, it's not a buzzword. See, I can uh, give an example from the shipping industry. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I just <clears throat> list out <clears throat> a few things which is uh, uh, happening in the shipping industry. As of January mm -hmm. 2020, the sulfur content of the marine fuel must be less mm -hmm. than 0.5% uh, uh, compared to 3.5%. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, this is going to happen among in the in the shipping uh, scenario. So how can ships comply with this new sulfur emission by using low sulfur compliant fuel, by installing advanced air quality system? So there are they have also listed out the ways of uh, uh, achieving this one. So uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, what what is given is ambitious target. I just I just read out something which is given by International Maritime Organization: 40 percent degrees by 2030 and 70 percent by uh, 2050. And there is a, a well laid out plan for that. Uh, they mm -hmm. set targets for annual greenhouse emissions for the international uh, shipping, stipulating a 50 percent reduction by 2050. And for that, what you are doing, there is something called EEXI, Efficiency Existing Shipping Index, something called which is coming up, is scheduled to come up uh, by January 2023. Uh -huh. That means okay. it specifically targets ships above 400 GT that falls under uh, uh, the, the certain uh, parameters. And uh, uh -huh. the set carbon emission standard that EX uses, the same method methodology, carbon emissions as described uh -huh. per unit and all that is happening. So uh, why I'm, I'm uh, listing out these initiatives are, yes, uh, ocean transportation is one of the uh, key area where definitely uh, the carbon emission uh, norms there we are trying to reduce. So there are concerted efforts like this in, in almost all the industry, it, it, it's coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, both the service providers, the shipping companies, the transport companies, the logistics companies, and the technology companies, you know, we are, all are setting some kind of a target, uh, how we can make it happen with the uh, emission norms uh, set. So uh, uh, it is not just a buzzword. There is a, mm -hmm. a clear, tangible action plan on that. Um, and uh, everybody is taking it very seriously, uh, Vikas. Great, great. Thanks for sharing uh, those examples, Anil. Ajishan, what are your views on that? Uh, no, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, Vikas, it's already, like Anil says, it's, it's already moved into action. It's not about a, mm -hmm. it's not a question of, oh, should we do it? Uh, at least for mm -hmm. the large uh, transportation companies like NERS, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so we've already committed to be carbon neutral 10 years ahead of the 2050. Mm -hmm. So we're aiming as an organization to be carbon neutral by 2040, uh, you know, mm -hmm. across all our, all our operations. So, uh, you know, of course, on the ocean side, uh, you know, we've, uh, we're now working on methanol based fuel, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, fuel systems on our ships. Uh, and, and then, uh, you know, to, to solve the chicken and egg problem over there, We've actually gone in and partnered with a few uh, large, uh, you know, suppliers who will be able to produce that much of uh, methanol. Uh, so, so it's already in action. We've already ordered the ships, uh, and we're already uh, running experiments to get the fuel. Similarly, on the land side operations, uh, here, you know, we uh, we are uh, we're already tasked with uh, you know a plan up to 2030 uh, to reduce our uh, you know carbon footprint. Uh, you know, I can't share the exact percentages. Uh, but but there is a plan over here saying you know how do you actually uh, you know significantly make a make a change and right now we are working on uh, you know how do you actually go about uh, you know using uh, you know we we are studying the EV uh, uh, option right and and at the moment there are still a lot of challenges from a technology side but we saw that you know that will evolve uh, so there's various different uh, ways uh, you know in which uh, this is under uh, motion and honestly it's not really an option for a lot of large companies because. You know, right. you have Tribhuvan here, right? And when Bosch has an ambition uh, to have an entire ecosystem to, uh, you know, to, to function at, uh, at, at uh, carbon zero, then a company like Musk or any other large company who wants to actually work with, uh, with Bosch in the future has pretty much no mm -hmm. choice but to follow suit. So, so, mm -hmm. so it's, it's almost, it's a business compulsion. 
uh, it's not a question mm-hmm. of uh, should we it's a question more of how should we how can we do it how fast we can do it uh, you know how can we uh, find the solutions you know where can technology come in uh, and and that's really where we are right now so uh, it's not a buzzword for sure because it's it's action okay. right as it is excellent thanks thanks teacher let's hear from tribhuvan right what are you hearing in bosch on zero carbon emission so uh, anil and you know vision uh, right so they have yes. already uh, spoken about uh, most of these aspects so let me touch upon uh, a different layer of it so today companies and corporates are voluntarily going on this path by 20 30 or 40 i imagine that you know the legal system or the political uh, wing will also catch up because the impact on the environment is huge of these the implications are huge of not you know achieving this path so the demand from all the uh, citizens will start coming in and so the government will be you know forced to make some laws and so all companies will have to you know uh, go on this path my uh, advice to our young generation is to look at as to this is going to happen right so this zero emission target you know countries will going are going to set for themselves and next decade and two we are going to hear a lot more about it we didn't used to hear about it in 20 uh, decade of 2000 or 2010 but in 2020 you will hear a lot more Uh, world in world economic forum in other such forums and governments are taking targets on their own by volition so more mm-hmm. some of these will get translated in in our legal system so th- there is a huge opportunity for our younger generation to look at as to what are the innovations that are needed which will you know enable this path so be it in cement to so look at you know uh, ammonia made bricks if it's you know in uh, automobile look at you know uh, consumption of the hydrogen cells hydrogen f- as a fuel then you know uh, in terms of uh, lower usage of coal and gas and you know oil so and so what is it that is on the coming on the curve so our generation should look at it and then start innovating on that front for those companies which are already in business my take is that they are already re- taking steps to reduce it their impact their you know dependency on such uh, t- traditional technologies as much as possible and they are also trying to shift it and so they will also you know in next 5 to 10 years will you know look at what are more sustainable solutions so it's a huge opportunity for our younger generation to innovate and prosper and foster collaboration across our country and it, this this will be needed at world level so if we can get a you know a head start on this particular aspect just on you know carbon footprint making companies carbon uh, zero or you know even at city level and you look at smart solution so these are going to get you know these uh, changes or revolution will is emerging and it will come come you know uh, make it happen and it is going to happen in 2030 or just by 2040 so we have a window of 10 to 15 years to get a head start on this and innovate and create newer solutions which many many uh, there will be a lot of takers for that that is what i would you know recommend for our uh, well thanks a lot to everyone for sharing those thoughts uh, i think we are about in last 15 minutes of this session so i will open it for, to the audience in case they have any question for our panelist uh, so let's just uh, you can type in the chat i'll read out the question and then uh, our panelists can share their thoughts on that so we have uh, our first question i think uh, it's a good question because while we are talking about how the road map is being laid out why it is important uh, the question is around how right how should an organization prepare for sustainability compliance right so maybe anil i would uh, first come to you if you can uh, maybe try to answer this uh, vikas can you repeat that uh, question yeah so how should an organization prepare for sustainability compliance Okay. maybe step by step road map whatever your advice you can share with the audience yeah 
See, first of all, uh, uh, we need to be very clear because for the for the benefit of the audience, what exactly is the ESG uh, uh, elements are? I mean, uh, mm. that is something we we have to have very clarity on that because that is one area. The starting phase itself, I find it uh, there's a lack of understanding on what exactly is the ESG standing for. I'll just uh, uh, for the benefit of the audience, I'll just because maybe they may know, but still, I just want to reiterate that point. Environment mm. comes from the the three points in that climate change climate change is carbon mm -hmm. emission then product carbon footprint second mm -hmm. is pollution and waste which is toxic emissions and waste packaging material and uh, waste and then third one is the environmental opportunities like clean tech green building this mm -hmm. covers just uh, on a on a uh, on a crisp level on the environmental part and the social mm -hmm. uh, uh, part covers one is the human capital how you manage the labor management, health and safety, then the mm -hmm. stakeholder uh, 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 management. That is, uh, whether is there any controversial outs uh, outsourcing, uh, community mm -hmm. relation, whether child labor is there in any of your uh, supply chain uh, system. And the third one is the social opportunity. That is access to communication and access to finance. So this covers mm -hmm. the third element. Mm -hmm. The last one is the governance part which covers the ESG element, which is a corporate mm -hmm. governance, which is a, how mm -hmm. a board should run the uh, company, what are the responsibilities of the board, and the, the pay part of it, and the corporate behavior, the, the business ethics, and the tax transparency. So these are the, uh, uh, I mean, just to give a brief snapshot on the ESG parameters which a company should uh, take care of. So, you know, I, I, I think that answers the question how we manage these three in a most uh, efficient and effective way. Uh, and also, uh, one more point that I like to add is, you know, uh, this, this, all this ESG will lead to the value protection and the value creation. Because when you look at the, uh, in the company's uh, ecosystem, the ESG will have a, a say on your CapEx, your OPEX, uh, your distribution cost, your yes. liabilities, your future growth and opportunities, your revenue and margin, and more important, your reputation and risk. So, absolutely, taking all these elements into uh, uh, consideration, uh, when an organization approaches it, uh, uh, it, it should approach in a phase manner. You can't change everything in one fine morning, but take the low hanging fruit, uh, build mm -hmm. that culture of ESG, build the, build the culture of sustainability. And start oh. that, uh, again, I'm saying small intentional changes. That is what oh. is needed. You start that and, and get into the, uh, uh, the full-blown uh, uh, ESG. There are different uh, uh, <coughs> standards, parameters, and all, which each organization can follow, uh, basis their requirement. And uh, one more point which I like to add here is now it has become very important even for the financing part of it. The capital mm -hmm. capital is going to be costly if you're not following the ESG parameters. Okay. So, you mm -hmm. know, it, it has come to that level also. So you, uh, I would say uh, this is this is, this is is the one road, roadmap any organization can uh, set uh, for their uh, uh, ESG journey. Okay, great, great answer. <laughs> uh i think we have a lot of questions in the chat so i'll go to the next one uh what methodologies can can companies use to reduce their waste uh so i don't know maybe jishan or Trivon, any one of you if you want to uh, answer that what's the question what what methodologies can companies use to reduce their waste <laughs> to reduce the waste okay yes so uh, they are actually set protocols for it. And it's not that, you know, one fine day I can uh, get up and say we are carbon neutral. So there are protocols of becoming carbon neutral. There are companies who, you know, accredit you. And when you look at it, there are two ways to achieve it, you know, principally without getting into this carbon neutral protocols. So mm -hmm. principally, how much are you emitting and how much are you, you know, conserving or how much are you taking out? So the amount of carbon dioxide that is, you know, emitted through our operations, through our buildings, through our you know, electricity that is being used. So how much carbon dioxide would have gotten in to produce that and then whatever waste we are creating. So that gets measured. And then there is a term called carbon sinks. 
so and if you look at natural carbon sinks these are soil forest ocean so which emit less carbon dioxide than what they can absorb so mm -hmm. you look at how much carbon dioxide a plant or a unit is emitting and is there any other location where you can absorb create this carbon sink which will absorb the more carbon dioxide than it is emitting so that way you look at balancing of how much carbon you are producing in the uh, in the atmosphere versus how much you are absorbing and then through carbon sequestration techniques you you know uh, take them out from the ecosystem totally so those are some of the ways how you become carbon neutral and if a company or a unit wants to uh, be carbon neutral then there are the companies the like climate impact partners whom you can reach out and you know they will help you define your entire uh, uh, program around it so it starts with defining you know what is it that we want to achieve do we want to achieve for a particular unit or particular plant or you know for location then there is a measurement uh, protocols which are you know put in place there are external companies who come and you know measure the total emissions then you set your target to how much you want to reduce by when and then there is reduce uh, you know you actually start implementing some of those measures which are recommended and then you communicate and the communication and ownership of this starts from the top so the executive support is totally needed and the will and then the communication across your rank and file and to all of your uh, stakeholders you prominently and you know take this baton and you know uh, keep driving and that's how step by step you achieve this carbon neutrality for your particular unit or particular plan mm -hmm. okay great great so i'll take another question um so so dishan uh, to you maybe uh, so the question is do you believe that there are certain laws that the government bodies need to pass to push sustainability see i think uh, you know to be fair i think vikas yes eventually yes uh, i would say yes the government will have to uh, put in laws uh, you know more to create level playing fields uh, uh -huh. you know as as we've discussed right i think in a lot of areas Uh, when you actually want to uh, drive a you know a carbon neutrality or sustainability then it will require investments uh, oh. you know and and then uh, when you are actually investing whether you're investing in technology whether you're investing in uh, you know like like vigor mentioned other ideas right uh, across the supply chain uh, then there will be a, you know obviously a return on uh, equity that will be uh, that will be looked at so Uh -huh. uh, so to answer the question, yes, I think in many cases, right? A good example is in shipping, right? As in where, uh, you know, or or even in transportation, right? Where, for example, uh, certain providers might want to move to let's say biofuel or blended fuel fuel, or they might want to move into, uh, for example, EVs or you know, uh, then in those cases, uh, there will need to be some incentive, uh, you know, to sort of uh, balance out the. Uh, the uh, and and stay competitive right in the short term at least because while long term everyone agrees uh, that there is going to be there is a benefit over here uh, more than any, more than anything else but in the short term i think there will be certain interventions that will be needed uh, by the government uh, you know and and not only in india but across the world uh, to balance out these things and to incentivize again a lot of it is also mandated uh, you know through the uh you know through through the through the global forums and the guidelines that are being sent so i think it it, it is coming uh you know like they said right and uh, like anil also mentioned for now i think there's not a lot but we should definitely expect a lot of regulation coming in around uh, in the oh. next eight to 10 years around these things i think so we all agree that it it is bound to happen right when and exactly in what shape we don't know as yet but i'm sure that government will mandate certain things right thanks thanks vishal uh tribhuvan there is a one question which is uh, directly to for you uh, which is uh, that bosch is a carbon neutral organization in, in multiple locations so uh, the request is to give uh, if you can give one or two points and how you have been able to achieve that yeah so as i said there is concept of carbon sink the natural sinks that we create and if you look at bosch plants the in bidadi be it you know in nasik or be it in you know uh, other locations in india so where you know our uh, fellow listeners or you know audience can you know anytime you are welcome to you know uh, visit for any of our plants 
and I'll, I'll i will help you know in arranging that so when you go through that and you take the tour you will see that those plants are actually you will feel like you you are in a mini uh, park so mm -hmm. you will see a lot of trees and you know the natural harvesting natural conservation so all of those measures are prominently being used and mm -hmm. each plant wherever we see that you know which has to you know inevitably produce emission we create we buy uh, soils you know and land area where we create those uh, natural forests where you know you so that will get offset in that particular location and so the principally one is our existing facilities we pay a lot of emphasis on making it as green as possible in fact make it climate positive by using solar and all other uh, techniques and b we also use you know natural things you know we you know uh, take active part in that and we offset our uh, existing emission so that way we have achieved this carbon neutrality a couple of years ago and thanks for that offer for visiting bosch plant i think i would really like to consider that it will be an honor to visit and see in in actual yeah. in practice right. so i think in the interest of time i'll i'll take one last question and the question is on fleetex it says uh, how a company like fleetex can contribute to this initiative of reducing carbon footprint so instead of me answering that because i don't want to give any sales pitch uh maybe i should ask uh, anil sir you understand fleetex right so how companies like fleetex can actually help uh, the other companies achieve uh, their objectives um <clears throat> uh see you know what uh, uh, like like you know tribhuvan mentioned uh, in one of his uh, question uh, points you know how you can triangulate uh, the because you are into transportation you are into the uh, the whole supply chain uh, um, optimization model you know how we can reduce the wastage that should be one area how technology can help uh, uh, to reduce the wastage maybe you know uh, the the on the in the road, road transportation sector the major inefficiency is you will have one side trip then uh, uh, return trip you don't have then you have to wait you have to move uh, all that wastage part load uh, how to synchronize the, the the load part so you know these are you should look at these uh, different elements mainly you know uh, the road transportation is one area where uh, definitely there is a lot of um, inefficiency uh, is already there uh, that is one area which is a low hanging which you can Uh, target and uh, i think fleetex is uh, doing that right um, so uh, that is one area and then in the overall optimization what is that whether you know uh, on on the entire 3pl because that is what we also do we look at the entire supply chain of the company and understand their uh, three different elements of uh, storage uh, transportation and the value add part in the three elements of uh, uh, logistics look at each element and see where the inefficiency uh, can be plugged in and which can lead to the uh, better sustainability uh, angle uh, these are few uh, areas as a technology company where uh, you know we can uh, add value to the uh, overall uh, supply chain uh, ecosystem Uh, that yeah. that's because uh, uh, yeah, what, thanks. what thank I you think i think any i you you answer the question anyway, i think tribhuvan also has a point to add yeah because so look i explain about uh, two uh, boshes here one is the plant bosch where you know you see traditional uh, technology is being built and being supplied to automotive sector to energy sector to building and supplies and uh, everywhere the other is the digital bosch where we are dealing with connected solutions you know uh, cameras mobility as solution and uh, and in digital bosch we are also coming up with this logistics operating system which is like an ecosystem for digital isp so my suggestion is players like fleetex you know can come and collaborate with bosch and we will together you know we can make this a yes. reality and yeah. help others you know achieve this carbon neutrality sooner <laughs> that's yeah, that, already that, ended with Bhuvan. Yeah. That's also a good point, uh, you know, because uh, uh, you know there is no need for uh, you know reinventing the wheel. Once uh, mm -hmm. you know Tribhuvan and Bosch has uh, the, uh, worked out something which is already put resources into that, and it is it is mm -hmm. better we 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 share the uh, knowledge 
for the larger cause of the um, society and for the larger cause of the industry that's a good point yes, yes great point right. jishan any pointer from you uh, on this one no i i, I fully agree uh, you know with, with with the points made i think definitely there is uh, a, you know i think it's only the beginning when it comes to you know technology enabling uh, logistics i think i think we have still have a lot long way to go uh and uh, you know companies like pretex uh, you know can actually uh, be a be a significant part of it uh, you know in terms of you know, how do you actually optimize how do you reduce waste etc we've done some work with pretex on uh, on on safety for example right driver safety etc uh, telematics uh, so so there's there's multiple uh, you know ways in which uh, technology can be leveraged and across the ecosystem if we can Uh, partner right with with what, what with the solutions i think there's a lot to be done there but we're only at the beginning of this uh, is what i feel yes. and there's yes. so much more that can be done mm-hmm. great thanks yeah, thanks because, uh, the the major point here is you know we, we all know uh, in india the overall logistic supply chain space is so unorganized and at least mm. in this trend you know the, if, if there uh, there are some concerted efforts to collaborate and uh, work towards a common solution for the customer it will be a great uh, opportunity absolutely absolutely yes well thanks a lot i think uh, we have come to the end of the session and personally i have learned a lot of things based on the real experts advice and insights and i am sure i have our attendees have taken a lot of uh, uh, learning too and maybe perhaps a few actionables as well so i thank all the attendees for joining for giving us their time and i thank all the panelists uh, from the bottom of my heart for for uh, making this session uh, so valuable thanks a lot everyone and uh, maybe we'll have much more interactions on the similar webinars in the futures as well thank you thank you thank, thank you very much. much thanks a lot thank, thank you everyone thanks everyone have a good day. have a great day bye bye